G'day, it's James here. Welcome to the channel. Today we're checking out limit switches, or in particular, magnetic reed switches. They're an essential part of every automated home. They let us know if our doors and our gates are open or if they're closed. We're going to see how they work, we're going to install one, and we're going to try using them in automations. We'll find them all over an automated home, in almost every place, and they're very handy. This gate motor has open and closed limit switches built, in, built into it. They're tactile switches, one's here and one's down there. And they can be adjusted by rotating these shafts to set the open and closed position. And home assistant actually knows because it gets sent to it by this cable here. And if you thought that fridges were magical, I'm afraid to disappoint you, they have limit switches too. So for a long time I had a door that was controlled by a Sonoff SV, which is just up here, and it's connected to Home Assistant. Now it has a magnetic reed switch just here, and that tells me, or tells Home Assistant that the garage door is open. So that's all you need to have the garage door controller work. However, if it hits the back of the car, because the car's not fired off forward, then the door can stay open all night, and I wouldn't know if it's open or closed. So what I did was I installed a limit switch down here and it's a garage type magnetic reed and it's a more heavy duty one. And that lets me know for sure that the door is actually closed and that's much more practical for automating automations. If you know that something is definitely closed and definitely open. Okay, so here are two commonly used magnetic reed switches that you'll find in a house to indicate whether a door is open or closed, whether a window is open or closed. And they're both working exactly the same way. You'll often find these in doors. This part here can actually be installed in the door frame and the wires run up into the building and off to a control system. And the magnetic part here will actually just be drilled into the top of the door so you don't even see it hardly. Now this one here, you'll find on windows usually. So they mount one on a sliding window where it opens and closes like so. So they're both exactly the same. So for the purpose of this exercise, we're gonna look at this one here. To do that, we've got just the multimeter. We're gonna connect it up to the continuity function. So all of this is in here is a switch. There's no voltage, nothing coming out of it. It just turns on or off. Now, usually in the state where it's away from the magnet, it's open nothing can pass through the switch as we see nothing's happening but as soon as we put it near the magnet we see we get a closed circuit so when the door is shut the circuit is closed now this action enables us to do something i guess a little bit tricky sometimes you want to have a number of these sensors in a room for instance you might want to have a door sensor and you might have three or four windows in the room so you've got some window sensors and you've got a door sensor and you don't want to have five or six sensors connected to the one room because it's just too many. So what you can do is you can actually put them in series. Okay, so we've got our sensors connected up in series. So our path goes into one of the, into one of the sensors and then it goes out of that sensor into the next sensor and then out of that sensor and so forth. And you can have as many as you want in a series. Now, once one of them closes, so the door is shut, we still have no continuity. But once we close the last one, we see we've got continuity. So it only takes opening one of them to trigger an alarm or to let you know that at least one of the doors and windows in the room is open. So that's one of the reasons why the switch operates in that direction. But this is the configuration that you normally will find in a read switch. So I'll show you the circuit diagram. So effectively, we have our magnet side here, and that would go in the door or on the window frame. And then we have our switch just here, our magnetic reed switch. When the magnet is close to the switch, we see a closed circuit. And when we have the magnet moved away, then the switch opens, and we know that something's changed. And of course, when we move back, we know that something's changed back again. And so we can use this to know whether a door is open, whether it's shut. We can know we have two of these and we can know whether our roller door is open or whether our roller door is shut. 
So that's the basic operation of the re-switches. They're very simple, they're low cost, and as I said before, they're good for creating automations and knowing what state your house is in. So this is how you might use this switch. So there's two ways, there's this way here. Basically it's connected to some sort of controller unit, a multi, um, micro controller unit, something like an ESP8266, an alarm system, or a Quinn LED, Decker. Now I say that because we're about to install one just here in this garage on this door. And because I have a Quinn LED board just right here, just up there, that's why I'm gonna use it, because it's convenient. It's there already. Now, when the switch is closed, in the closed position, we can see here that we have a choice. We can either wire it up so that we have our ground going to the to the input of the, the um, to the input on, on the device, or we can have a voltage of 3.3 volts going to our input. So the difference between that is one is active low and one is active high. So usually what it will, what will dictate it is what, what your controller is capable of. For instance, I think most ESP8266 inputs have built in pull up resistors, but not pull down, if I remember correctly. So that means you'd want to use an active low because that way you can activate the pull up in software on the, on the input. And you need a pull up, otherwise the input on the controller will just float around and the door will be open, shut, open, shut, and you won't get an accurate reading. So that's easy to set up in software when your controller has built-in pull-ups. Now the ESP32, or the Quinn LED Decker, which is an ESP32, it actually has both, so you could use either. It doesn't really matter. You could also add your own pull-ups. You could just simply get a resistor from the input and take it to ground or to 3.3 volts. So that's one way that we can control, use our sensors to tell us what's going on in our house. And we're gonna see that in action on the Quinn LED. Now the second way is if it's part of an alarm system, and you could utilize this on, an, on a, any controller, but it's a little bit more complex. It uses a resistor in series, in line, like so. And this resistor value is obviously only known to the installer. And this adds extra security. So what it does is, uh, this one here, if you wanted to bypass the security system, you simply need to cut the wire and short it at the same time. And the controller wouldn't know that anything's happened. And then you can open the door, the window, and the controller doesn't know. Now with the resistor in line just here, it, alarm system's actually reading a resistance, not an open or a shut. So you can't, even if you knew the resistance, removing the resistance and adding one in line would actually be quite difficult to do, if not impossible, without alerting the alarm that something is being tampered with. So that resistor in line means it gives added security. So that's something that an alarm system will add. So perhaps if you want to have more security than a DIY system, um, it may often be better to get a commercial alarm system, which is standalone. And perhaps one that will connect into Home Assistant and you can act access all the zones and get all the information out of it and use it in your automations. There's a few systems out there that can do that. Anyway, we're gonna be using this method here today and we're gonna be installing it, as I said, on the door using one of these little sensors here. So let's jump in and do that now. And then we'll have a look at an automation we can create and why I wanna have it there in the first place. Well, what about wireless reed switches? Can you use those? Well, you can. I have some of those in my house, like this one here, and I've got one just here on the door. Now this is a RF433 megahertz one, and it's connected to a Sonoff Son RF bridge, and you can use them. The only problem is they have weird batteries, like 12 volt ones that are weird shaped and hard to find. And even if they don't have weird batteries, then you still gotta change batteries, even if they're AA or AAA, which can be annoying. Plus, um, they are often Zigbee or Z-Wave or RF and they're trying to conserve power so they tend to be a bit laggy. So this particular one here it takes about two or three seconds for the signal to come through. Now if you're trying to do an automation with that it can be a bit annoying and I think on one of my videos, the Fully Kiosk video, someone commented that they're going to use uh, the, their tablet to make an announcement if someone opened a door. Now if there's a lag from the door sensor of two or three seconds then it's not going to be very effective. So that's the problem with wireless sensors. Now, it's always better to run a wire and, and cheaper usually to have a wired one sensor, but it, sometimes you need to have it. It's all your only choice. Anyway, that's another topic for another video and another day. 
let's get back to the wire sensors. This is the one we're going to replace. And as you can see, we've got the transmitter here. And the problem was actually trying to get the magnet to even mount there was difficult. Whereas these ones here are simple. Now the magnet actually goes in the top of the door, the moving part. So just drill a hole in there and mount the magnet. And this one here just goes, a hole goes through there that lines up with the door. And we're gonna bring it out there and it put a little bit of duct across into this board here. And then across and up into my Quinn LED, which is hiding up in there, which I'll be able to use very conveniently to connect to the home assistant. Now this is all low voltage, so that's the good thing about this project. It's something that anyone can do. It's all just 12 volts or three and a half volts connecting to a small microcontroller. So it's something that if you wanted to give it a go, you can, you can try it out without the risk of death, which is what some of my projects in the past have had. So I think this is a pretty good project, especially to get started on in with home automation. Okay, I'm gonna use this drill bit here, which is 11 mil, to drill a small hole just here in the center of this piece. And then I'm going to use another drill to drill up through the bricks. And this is a solid, well, it's a brick with cores in it. But I'm going to drill up and come out just above the top just there. If I drill through the wall, it'll blow out a big chunk. So I'm going to have to line up where my drill goes and then drill in at the top. And then I should be able to conceal the wire without needing some duct. So that will save some time. Well, it turns out my drill bit's not long enough, so we're gonna to have to revert back to the duct method. And we'll quickly boot up the K12. And we'll solder our sensor onto the end of our figure eight. In this case, the plan really doesn't really matter. There is no clarity. Some heat shrink would be nice, but tape will have to do today. And I picked out a lovely shade of red to go with the white, so I hope that doesn't trigger anyone. And we'll pop that back up. Nice firm press. Might need a little bit of glue later on. That should be for now. Now we're just going to run some duct across to there. Okay, now it's time to move up on top of the cupboard and we're going to connect our sensor wire, our 
sensor into the Quinn LED board. And actually, first we'll drill a hole in the top of that door just there. And then we'll do that. Just up here to line up with the reed switch just there. And it's got quite good range, so but we want to get it as close as possible. And then we can connect up the Quinn LED, LED board up there. Now, of course, before we hook it up, we've just got to test it out and make sure that it's all aligned and that the sensor, the reed switch is working properly. So we've just got our multimeter here on each lead and continuity or resistance setting. And it should be open when the door is open. And then if we close the door, instant that's exactly what it should do okay if you can see that there I think I might turn this off first or just unplug it so it has some outputs on the end here that are also connected to some of these channels now I'm only using two channels on this board so I think I might just use GPIO 22 I'm gonna make it an active ground which means one wire will go to the ground terminal and one wire will go to IO22. So I'll just do that now. Now there's actually a MOSFET connected to that, but I don't think it'll matter. I don't think that's going to affect the sensor at all. Pretty sure it won't. Oops. And I have to do it for that one. I was about to short it out. There's also a one wire terminal on here, but that's connected to a temperature sensor. There's actually a Dallas temperature sensor just there. So I can't use that, but there's actually some here at the end I could use. But that means that I have to, I'd have to go get a DuPont connector to attach it and that's too complicated. So I'm just gonna stick with 22 and we'll try that out. Radio sets connected up, and like I said before, no polarity. One goes to ground, one goes to the GPIO on this ESP32 module. And up until now, I was always wondering what the point of having extra IOs on this board was. I thought you'd only ever use it for doing LED channels, but there you go. I found a use for it. A door sensor for my garage. And of course, now is the most important part of the job. A tip for any tradesmen out there, if you don't clean up, people will look for something you've done wrong, even if you've done a perfectly good job. The clean up is very important. Okay, so our sensor's all installed, just there. We've got our duct going across there and it's wired up to our Quinn LED board, ready to program. We've cleaned up and now here's the tip. Don't do a good job of cleaning up and a little bit extra, but make sure you always leave one little spot behind. So that way the husband can go, ah, he's missed a spot. And that way both people are happy. Husband is happy and the wife's happy. So that's the tip. Don't do too good a job, otherwise you might get hated. All right, and we've got our magnetic switch up here. So that of course can be painted over, that's fine. Now let's get to programming. So now we're in Home Assistant. And to start off with, we're gonna set up our binary sensor using Home ESP. Now this is my system, it's been quite, it's quite old and I'm planning on refreshing it soon. So it's got stuff all over the joint. But basically you've got Home ESP here I'm planning on making a video more about that later, so I don't mean too concerned about this. We're going to come into Home ESP, and we've got all our modules, and this is where I do all my testing. I test all sorts of things, so some of them are connected to them, some of them aren't. 
We're going to find our Quin LED, which is connected. Which is this one just here. And we're going to edit the file. So this is our file just here. Now we're going to add a binary sensor. Now to do that, we can come over to the ESB Home site and it gives us some information on GPIO binary sensors, which is what we're setting up. So basically we can just copy this setup here and we're going to be using the activating the internal pull up because we have an active load. We want an input pull up. Otherwise the sensor will float around all over the place. So we're just going to grab this and we'll put it into our file. So we'll just place it in just up here under switch. We'll do. So we're using pin 22. And we want an input pull up and it's a GPIO platform. And the name of it, I'm going to call it scullery door. Okay. Now there's one more thing that I wanted to do is give it a device class that will bring the icon into Home Assistant. I believe. And it's a door. Now, I always forget which way around it is, but the worst case is we can just come in and change it again. But we get, I believe that we want it inverted. So we want it to be on when the door is closed. But if we got it wrong, we can just come in and change it again. So we're going to invert it, invert the logic by doing that. So we save that. And it hasn't come up with any errors, so we've got that all correct. And we can upload it. And it's going to send it to that little ESP32 that we saw previously that we connected up. So that compiles the program all automatically. It's a pretty cool platform if you just want to play with electronics and experiment with little gadgets. And it works very well. I'm very happy with it. It's quite fun. Okay. So that is working now. So now we can come across into configuration, integrations, and we go to our home ASP. It might actually have pulled it in by itself, but I'll just double check because it's a not, it's not actually a new module. Queen LED. So there's this one just here. We can have a look at the entities that it has. And it, it's actually pulled in already. So it's set up in Home Assistant without us having to do anything. There's a binary sensor, scullery doll. Now we can try it out. I'm just going to go into my Lovelace configuration. I wouldn't take too much note of this. I don't use the manual way of doing, doing it very much anymore. And we're just going to add that binary sensor onto our sensors page. So we'll put it just on the garage door. So we can see it operating. In fact, we don't even really need it in the UI, but we're going to put it there so we can see it. Scullery door. And that will save. And then we can come across to our sensors page and reload it. And our door is just there. Now it looks like I got it wrong. We have to change it from inverted to not inverted. But I'll go open the door. I don't know. It's a question. Yeah, it's a, it's a question mark. Okay, so I found the problem with the the imports. It seems that it needs to be an active high. So I've just swapped it over so it's 3.3 volts going to the GPIO. And that is now working correctly. So the only thing is, though, it's bound round back to front. So the door is actually closed at the moment and it says open. Now I open the door and it says closed. So to change that, it's easy. We just come back into here and we edit the, f 
the quin LED file, LED1, and we'll just come down to the binary sensor we created, and now we will need to add inverted true, and that'll put our door around so it's telling us the right way around. So we'll save that and upload it. All right, so we've swapped around the inverted um, flag. And so now the door is open and it says open. Now, if we close the door, we've got Leo closing the door for us and it tells us it's closed. We've got that working, awesome. Now it is time to move on to our first automation.